Wayne, you have a toilet bowl coffee mug that's fitting. That's fitting for my day. It says coffee makes you poop. Uh, there's other things that make you poop. So, uh, so tell me about uh, what's going on. What did you? What's been going on? Not much. Yeah, I had a. You seem quiet today. You seem. I had a. I had to come home from work early yesterday. What happened? And I'm trying to be more quiet because I always talk too loud and I don't want to feel like I'm talking over you. And Okay. Well, you do, so. No, but I don't. It's not on purpose. It might be your uh, ADHD. No, I think it's this mic and I'm trying to set it up. Like, I'm not a, prof well, I'm a professional now. How does that sound? Does that sound all right, people? Sounds good. Okay, I'm to just me, a little bit. I got bit, headphones on. I'm a little bit. Um, I've got some stuff <laughs> on my brain. I got some stuff. Yeah, I'm you sure know what? You do. Here's this. Here's a, here's um, a saying I've never got. Got a lot on my plate. That means that you, you know, for for me, what that means is that you were at the buffet and you kept going back and filling it up. There's all different kinds of foods on there. There's macaroni and cheese and applesauce. You got some steak and then like a hot dog and like maybe like like corn fritters and a, a pasta, like some pasta. It's a lot on your plate. Yeah, I guess it is. So emotionally, it means you've mm -hmm. got too much pasta in your body. Yeah, if you if you eat too much pasta, there is pasta in your body. That's science. Mm -hmm. I once knew a guy well, I still know him. And I looked over one day and he was shoveling, he was eating pasta and he was shoveling at his mouth like super quick. And I said, why are you eating so fast? He says, because it tricks my body. And I'm like, it tricks your body? He says, yeah. If I eat it really fast, then I've eaten so much before my body realizes it's full. That sounds, uh, it sounds healthy. I mean. This guy has like abs in his Adam's apple. He's... This, the fittest guy, Holy shit. guy in the world. How the fuck do you do that? I don't know. Well, I definitely don't know. I've got hey, a body like a yourself I've got a body it. like a bag of milk. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What does that mean? Oh well, I guess yeah. You guys don't have bagged milk down there, do you? Why the f who the fuck would have bagged milk? Canada, it's a thing. I where I grew up, I wasn't into it either. But you get milk in bags. Well, we go in liters, so it's a li it's like a two liters, so half a quart of milk in a bag. Why would anyone sell milk in a bag? Bag milk. It's a it's a truly Canadian thing for, for sure. Yeah, I don't understand why. That's I don't why. actually I either, and it's annoying with. if you don't cut the top right. It's all over. Like you get one shot at it. <laughs> yeah well it's like those uh straw those uh those you know juice boxes you give to your kids you puncture that thing the wrong way and everyone's fucked <laughs> ah! oh wayne oh boy alex wayne do you want wanna... is uh Wayne is an interesting human. He goes through interesting things in his life, and that's just a fact. Do you? That's all I'll say. I'm going through something interesting um, shortly in November. Yes. Do we? Do we tell everyone in a bit? Okay. We have questions today too, don't we? From last week that we didn't respond to. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I put it out before we because I usually put it. This was last minute. You kind of well, we knew that we were going to record today, but we didn't know that we were what time or anything. So we haven't oh. put it out there for people to ask questions. However, I have like five or six good ones that yeah. um, that that we can that we can pay heed to. I like paying heed. Sorry, I had an English muffin. No, I did, though. That's... Did you have an English muffin, and did you have other things uh, also? No, I just had an English muffin. Avec fromage. That's French for with cheese. Did you, did you uh, send me a video the other day uh, after you were finishing up an entire uh, 
frozen pizza that you had in the oven. Did you do that? Yeah, but it was one of the thin crust ones. But you ate the whole thing, right? That's a family meal. No, it's you not. What thing. a family of what? Well, a family of four, probably. Four you could eat that. Four gerbils. Like who? That was barely enough to. I mean, I sweat. That's what I generally do. My one buddy eats until like quick, and then realizes he's full. I know I'm full when I'm sweating. Yeah, I do that at Thanksgiving. Shit, who am I kidding? I did that the other day. I got food and I ate till I sweat. I want an entire turkey dinner. I can't wait for my next turkey dinner. Oh, man, you know what I miss? I know it's like not the season yet, but it kind of is because it's fall. And I miss stuffing and mashed potatoes with gravy and turkey. And, you know, I love that so much, man. Well, now... I was just thinking about this, like right this second, you were telling me about the farm down the street and you want to yes. start eating farm to table. Do they have mm -hmm. turkeys as well? Like, can you do an entire turkey dinner farm to table? I think we can. Yeah, I think we can because they do have everything. And if they don't grow it or have it there, they have other farms bring in their stuff because they do this market. It's called Boggy Creek in Austin, Texas, and it's it's literally 200 yards from our front door. You can just go there, and, and uh, but they have everything, man. They even have like bison and deer meat and ground beef, and they have um, cheeses that they make and breads. It's just phenomenal. This morning, I actually posted a story, a picture of the breakfast I made this morning, and it's their sourdough bread, a little bit of olive oil, you know, toasted, and then I put uh, a nice slice of one of their tomatoes on there, some red onion, arugula, little bit of uh, salt and pepper, and then I put a, uh, a over easy egg on top of that. Oh my god, healthy and and brilliant. God, that's yeah. I made one for my wife too, and she loved it. Well, I saw the picture; it looked super good. It looked like it was out of a magazine. Yeah, it kind of looked. It kind when when I sat it down on the table. I was like, hon, I, I think I just made like a five-star hotel breakfast. Michelin that they star. They charge you like $38. What? Michelin star. Yeah, I never understood why they say Michelin, because those are tires. Every time they say it, I'm like, that's a good tire. Yeah, and... and maybe because the Michelin man is hotels, like a, I mean, Maybe the Michelin man or, is like a big... Because he's a big heavy dude, that he likes good food. So then they took the Michelin star... Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, well, the Michelin man gives yeah. it gives it five stars. Hmm. Well, look, you know, never trust a skinny chef. You know what I mean? Or Most chefs are skinny nowadays, which is interesting to me. That means they're not really tasting a lot of their own foods. That's a very good point. I want my chef... When I have my own chef, All right. I want him to be 470 pounds on the verge of a massive coronary. And he loves Eggs Benedict. Yes, his good friend Eggs Benedict, he loves him very oh, much. Benedict. You know, what well, I you know what I love about Benny? <laughs> hey, do you know that there's an actor out there and literally his name is Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, of course I know who What Benedict. the fuck is wrong with that name? Nothing. He's doing pretty well. And he's pretty, He's doing really he's well. Decent he's doing he's really great. well. He's but a big theater name. guy. He's a big theater guy. He is. He's a, he's a wonderful actor. Uh uh Benedict but Benny, Cumberbatch. Yeah, that name is so pretentious and so like almost like a pretentious skeezy. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Um Rhonda, yes, darling. Did Benedict Cumberpatch touch your knickers the other night? He showed. Did you say Cumberpatch? It? It's Cumberbatch. With a B. Not Cumberbatch. Not in. Not, I don't think it's Cumpatch. Not in my skit. <laughs> this is my. We're supposed to be doing the same skit. We're doing a podcast together. Well, we don't talk about it beforehand. No, we do not, which is also really good. This is not scripted, ladies and gents. <laughs> I think more ladies listen to this than gents. Yeah, I'm going to actually try to keep my fucks to a minimum. I'm consciously, I'm consciously, I listened to episode seven. I was like, what was I angry about that day? 
Yeah, this is uh, this is episode eight, eight, and I'm gonna just keep saying fuck when I want. No, I get it, I get it, but I, I have mm-hmm. to impress myself so I can impress other people. You know, I'm getting ready. I'm I'm getting ready. Something in November. <laughs> Should we tell them? Not yet. Okay. Should we get a question out there? I kind of want to hear a question because they look good, like good questions. Yeah, let me um, let me go into my questions and see. Let me go yeah. into my bank of questions. I posted it on my Instagram story, and people can do that. They just go on our Instagram story, and um, when you follow us on Instagram, before we mm-hmm. record, we're gonna put we'll put stuff out so you can ask us questions and just do it that way or DM us, and then that way, yeah, um, we don't have time to think about our answers. Yeah, it's perfect. You know, if you send now, a question I, in, we'll read it. Yeah, of course. If we can get to them all, I mean, I think we did three questions last time, and I know there's more. Mm-hmm. I was just into my Instagram, and I... Oh, oh. What the heck? Was Wayne's that? coming to Austin in November to visit me. Why would you Why would you throw it out there like that? I thought we were going to do, like, the drum I roll. couldn't I, hold it in, yeah, man. but I have, like, the drum roll thing that I could have... Put out. I have sound effects. We have sound effects. Can you do the drum roll real quick? Yeah. And then I'll say it. Okay, everyone, pretend you didn't hear what I just said. Okay, so I'm gonna let the drum roll go. Okay. And then and then I'll give you the point when the drum rolls over. And then okay. you tell them. Okay. Um but we don't edit any of this out. Nothing. And here's the drum roll now. Okay. This is exciting news. Wayne is coming to visit me in Austin in November. I wanted to surprise you. And no, I don't. I don't do well with surprises. Your wife. Like your wife played along for about 15 minutes, and I was like, "Listen, I'm going to book some time off, and I'm I'm planning on coming November." Does this? She's like, "Yeah." Yeah, it works. Um, you know, and she thinks that she's like, "Oh, he'll love it." And then I went to book it, and I said, "Okay, I'm just making sure." And she goes, "Man, maybe we tell Alex because Alex, <laughs> Alex isn't one for the big old surprise." So yeah, which I'm not either. And 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 it, I feel such a weight lifted off my shoulders. But I did. I said, "Can you call me?" And he yep. called me. Hmm. And uh, I told you I'm coming there on the 18th of November. You did, and I'm I'm very excited about that. And you're going to see Austin. You're going to see uh, my bathrooms in my house that I use. You're going to see um, the food stuff out here. You're gonna you're gonna see me probably get drunk at least once. You're gonna see. Uh, you're gonna meet my wife. You're gonna meet uh, Texans. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited. Yeah, it's going to be good. What I will say, however, is um, it's it's I'm like I, I'm a single guy, so I don't have, you know, if you said, hey, Wayne, I'm coming out to or coming up to Canada, I'd be like, this is super exciting. I can't mm-hmm. wait for you to get here. Um, the guest room will be set up and ready for you, which is mm-hmm. kind of how the conversation with you started. I was coming mm-hmm. to a guest room. It was going to mm-hmm. be super exciting. And as you were telling me that I'm probably going to stay in your guest room, what was your wife doing? She was saying, you know, that's fine, but there's also Airbnbs right around our house. You know, the thing is, is that my wife and I can be loud and uh, we like to walk around nude and uh, we don't want to hear you fart. And we have a small house. It's a thousand ninety square feet. Beautiful home, small. And I could probably, like, she can probably hear me right now. I'm on the second floor. She's downstairs in the living room with the TV on, and I guarantee you, she can hear me right now. Hmm. Yeah. So if you were to start, say, you were to start touching yourself in the guest bedroom, and you moan or something, we can hear you. <sighs> yeah. Don't want that. Hmm. I don't want that to ruin our friendship. I don't know if I'm a moaner now that I think about it. Mm. Moaner boner. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. I've always wanted to be called that. 
No, but your wife, it was funny because you're like, give me 20 minutes. I'm just going to get home. And as you're like telling me that, she's sending me links for Airbnbs. So I knew right there that I was. Which is wild because I hadn't said anything. I know. That's what I'm saying. I wasn't even home. That's what I'm saying. Well, she knew I was coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 um, and, which I agree with. To be completely honest with you, at this age, when you're going to visit your friends, even if we have hung out 15 times, I'm probably going to get an Airbnb or yeah. Like if I was to come to Canada, I literally, well, I mean, you're here's, single. Here's I mean, different. You know. Yeah. Here's different. It's, 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 you know, I've got a 27,000 square foot house because of my, you know, Jesus Christ. TikTok. Right. Yeah. So you would stay in, Wait, you have a, wait, so then you have a 27,000 square foot house because of your TikTok thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just the thing I do on TikTok. So like you would stay in next I'm to so the confused. atrium. You'd stay uh-huh. next to the atrium right below the, the water. Atrium? The atrium? Right below the Was that the on the waterfall. other side of the basketball court and then next to the golf course? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a putting yeah. green. Wayne That's is not Wayne is, out of water. Yeah, Wayne has a 27-square-foot home. I also have a grade four-level math, so it's actually 1,200 square feet. I do have, however, uh, like I have, I have the bunkie you could stay in. I have that old vintage trailer that's all redone. You could stay in, not in the winter. I'd probably time. get, a, I'd probably get a hotel room. No, I wouldn't let you. Not here. No, no, you'd be fine here because I'm out in the if country. If you were, if you were married, if you were married, and I hadn't met your wife, like yeah. personally met her and all that stuff, I would stay at a. I yeah, would. yeah, yeah. Um, what I will say is this, however. Um, I have a, actually, no, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to, ha- I'm going to ask you a question that I'm going to read a question if that's okay. Okay. Yeah. So talking about space and small space and stuff like that. The other day I was doing my hot tub maintenance. I have a hot tub and it's, it's hot tub season. Now it's hot nice. tub, hot, hot tub, tub yeah. spa, a hot tub mm-hmm. spa. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's that season now. The nights are really cool, like 40-degree nights, 50-degree nights. So you go out. Oh, already? Wow. Oh, yeah. Sure. All the leaves are turning. It's fall now. Mm-hmm. All the leaves are brown. All the leaves are brown. And the sky is gray. And the sky is gray. I went for a walk. Down to the store. And I think All that I... On a oh. day. Go ahead. So you, you're having your spa uh, reignited? What? Like when, when you're, when you're going to do the hot tub thing, because there's mm-hmm. listeners out there that are contemplating right now buying a hot tub because like, of what we're talking about. Right. Um, what's creepy small, like what's too small. Like, would you come if, if you were here for the weekend and we were just hanging mm-hmm. out and I was like, Hey man, you want to go into my hot tub just as, <laughs> as buddies? That's already creepy. So yeah. So how do we go in the hot tub without that <laughs> thing before? Well, we'd just be like, dude, you know, we talk in our lower voices. Yeah. Yo, uh, let's go in the hot tub, dude. My my fucking shoulders are sore. I need them. I need them rubbed. Yeah. Let's... No, because then that gets somewhere weird. That goes weird. Too. Hey, bro, why don't we crank that hot tub up to the hottest setting? Because we're manly as fuck, and then we just go in and accidentally your foot touches my leg. No. Yeah, I mean, no, because that that goes to the same place. So it's like I don't think we could do it without without getting some form of like, you know, uh, gay connotations. So it's like, so if I said to you, "Hey Wayne, can we get in your hot tub and maybe we bring some sandwiches in there and don't touch my balls?" I got out of that sandwiches. That's all I got. Sandwiches. Now, no... because you're so tall, would, do your mm-hmm. knees do your knees come out of the hot tub? Like, do you sit? Do you look all weird in there? Like a like a... I'd rest my legs on your shoulders just so I can fit in there. <laughs> I love that. I just picture it immediately. <laughs> you went on a rampage hey, let's, uh... the other day. You went on a <laughs> rampage the other day, showing me your feet, and all I see is your feet. That's head. because you, during one of our production meetings, you, we were, were FaceTiming, just so everyone knows, he starts taking off his shirt, so his, his chest, his breasts are out, his stomach's out, they're, and I was like, why do I have to sit? So I I put my foot on camera. They're called pecs. Barefoot. They're called pecs. What did I call them? Breasts. 
<laughs> I didn't even realize I did that. <laughs> I, I have sorry. His peck breasts were out. I bought some fitness equipment today, so we're 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 changing. I did. I it's in my truck too. Um, oh, what's it? What, you haven't brought it in yet, huh? No, it'll stay out there for a while. It'll be like that bag you you have set aside for Goodwill that you're gonna take, and it and you put it in your trunk. And then five months later, you open your trunk and you go, oh, God, I forgot to bring that to Goodwill. <laughs> I had a garbage bag full of clothes for like four and a half months in the back of my trunk. Of course. I do that all the time. Yeah. I do it all the time. Dude, before we left to come to Austin, I was packing up to leave and I look at the front by the by the front door. I kid you not. There was four garbage bags filled with clothes that had been sitting. They had dust on them, dude. That's how long they were sitting by the front door. Let's get a question, man. I'm looking. Do we go, do we go like, uh... oh, I like this one. Now, I don't have their name. This was done on our Instagram. So okay, it's you just, don't have their name? I, I believe this girl's name is Liz. Okay. What's her, her handle? Liz, What's her handle? Lizzie M217. Okay, Lizzie M217. Let's hear the question. Lizzie M217 asked, would you rather camp in the forest or stay in a haunted house alone for one night? So alone. So camp in the forest alone or stay in a haunted house alone for one night? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, probably, uh, probably in the forest alone. Do I get do I get my truck? Do I have a tent? Do, or am I just literally sleeping on the the floor of the forest with the bugs and everything? Well, I mean, she we didn't know. she didn't really it's not it's not like she set this up like naked and afraid. So, I'm pretty sure okay. we can have like a shopping list of shit that we can bring. Okay, so I'm going to say the forest only because haunted houses are haunted. I figured you would have said haunted house cuz you love horror movies. I love horror movies because they're on my TV screen and they can't come through and, and kill me. Oh, man. So I don't want to be in the haunted house. Like, if I was going to do a horror movie, I'd be scared to do it. I wish I could say the name of the show that I just guest starred on because uh, I'll I could tell you something about that, too, that freaked me out. Well, that would mess with me with the forest thing. Um, I, I think I would try hard to do neither. Like both are giving me anxiety to no end. I don't like haunted anything and I'm not a big fan of the forest. Like I like the forest. You can commune with nature. Yeah. But then nature crawls up your stuff, man. I'm Listen, dude, if we fucking were in the forest on the ground at night and those night crawlers come in what if they what if they got up into your peen right like they talk about when you when you swim in wild water apparently if you i call it wild water like the, the stuff out like the real wild water yeah or like the tamed water lakes and lakes and streams and i saw this thing oceans. where this guy was pissing in this river and this little tiny fish swam up his pee stream and latched on inside his wing. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm oh talking about. Oh my god. See that would freak me out, man. Any, any any I don't do I don't do the whole wild water thing. Like I'm not a big fan of 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 going in that stuff at all. I think it's just why. There's you don't know what is you don't yeah. know what's You don't there. know what's under you. You don't know what's around mm -hmm. you. Mm -mm. I mean, there's a there's a um when I was younger, growing up on the shore uh, in New Jersey, I'd be at the beach all the time. I'd be in the ocean constantly. I would body surf. I'd boogie board. I even tried surfboarding for a little bit. All that stuff. Now, I'm like, man, you don't know if a great white shark's like coming at you and ready to bite off your ween. You don't know how dedicated he is or she is. You don't know what they've been like. You don't know the kind of work they've been doing on themselves. They might have anger issues. You don't, we don't know. We can't get into the minds. And I get that there's marine biologists out there and there's scientists people. You still don't know because you haven't had a conversation. You, 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 and you never will. So basically all you're doing, marine biologists, is you're judging a book by its cover and then you're telling us 
you know, your thoughts. <laughs> but really, let's get to let's get to brass tax here. Down to brass tax. Let's get oh, down and to brass tax. Tax like the like the tax, not yeah. like tax time. Yeah. Which reminds oh, me. Oh, fuck. Wayne, yeah, no, not tax, like tax season. It's but tax. let's get down to bra brass tax. Okay. You don't know. Like, it's just, I get that no. you do experiments and stuff, but you don't know. No great wharf. Go, no great wharf. <laughs> no great. Is that Canadian? I don't yeah. know what the hell you just yeah. said. Yeah. Oh, the rare great wharf lobster. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like some people will be like, Oh, this is my grizzly bear, and he loves me. Meanwhile, the bear, the next day, bites off their ween. Doesn't love you anymore now, does he? Didn't see that Well, then the person that you. owns the bear would be like, it's my fault. I still have the utmost respect for grizzly bears, even though this one bit off my ween. I, th it was my fault. Yeah, it was your fault, you dumb fuck. You know why? Because you have a fucking grizzly bear in your living room. You shouldn't. It's your fault. You shouldn't have a grizzly bear in your living room. You shouldn't have a grizzly bear. No, we should bear. have a grizzly bear in their home. No. Like, or an elk or or a fucking mountain lion or it, anything that could rip your ween out. Anything that like like you're questioning. Anything that that like that you're like um you know, maybe maybe this could kill me in like a second and a half. And then on on top of this play, play dead. Play dead, they say. If a grizzly bear is going to attack you, play dead. Play dead. <laughs> yeah. Why? So he can he can put his paws on my chest or my back and do that that fucking when they when they just thrust their fucking muscles. I'm doing two, into your. I'm I'm doing two things. I'm doing two things. One, first of all, I'm no matter the antidepressants, I am never going to be calm, cool, and collected enough to play dead when a grizzly bear is attacking me i'm gonna scream no, I'm i'd gonna, have to be dead i'm going to have the most highest pitch scream in the world and then i'm gonna shit myself that's those are the two <laughs> things those are the that's two it. things and and you can and in situations like that you can shit yourself immediately like that. dude i would shit my dress like that boom shit my dress just like that hey what are you doing right now shitting myself because I'm getting attacked by a bear. <laughs> you know, it's funny to me, man. Like, okay, so I saw this one couple. This is years ago. I saw a video on it. This one couple has a fucking, like, 40,000 long fucking python in their bathtub. 40,000 what? Like, feet? Feet. And it, the thing, the, the, the width of it, their circumference of this fucking thing was like, I don't know, like a pizza, a large pizza. Like, that's how round this thing was. And it attacked their son, who was like two. And you can't get, that's, first of all, those snakes, all snakes, they're all muscle. So if that thing wraps you up, you're fucking dead. And they're like, I can't believe. And the snake's name was like Willie or something like, Willie ate, Willie ate Steven. Like, yeah, because it's a fucking snake, you fucking idiot. Ah, oh, God, people piss me off. How 40,000 feet long and the circumference of a pizza it's you know what a large pizza maybe i you know maybe it wasn't forty thousand feet it, long that's a long that's really too long I it think, was probably like 20 feet i think okay good now that we're getting back to reality i'm like ooh, are you gonna talk about your seven and a half foot penis next because that's just a lie uh first of all look i don't want to make any dudes out there jealous we need all the listeners we can get. And if I start talking about my giant dong. It's not giant. You're just really, you're just a giant. You're a big dude. Yeah, but you're when six you have five. a baby arm, when you have a chunky baby arm for a ween, you know. Why can't you just finish the word? For Why people. can't you just call it a wiener? Why did you have to drop the ER? Because they dropped you. Is that <laughs> 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 is that a joke? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> it just fell hey, out of. Uh, let me ask you this: um, mm. this whole conversation, I'm scared of the things that you're going to ask me. Why would you be just scared? Because I feel like you're always just shitting on me, Alex. Oh man, that's funny. 
as you drink, as you drink from a toilet. So uh, I sent you a video this morning. I don't want to talk about it. Um, and you sent me a video back. Like, no, there's a line drawn. Yeah, it's called boundaries, Alex. Well, I was and furthering our friendship with that video. That's not furthering friendship. Listen, I'm not going to talk about the video because I just like to move past the video. Um, mm -hmm. However, let's talk about boundaries for a second. When okay. one person creates a boundary, we create the boundary for ourselves, not for the other person. However, okay. there are times in our lives where we're going to create boundaries. For example, you're in a new relationship. You don't want to talk about certain things because they're triggers. So you create this boundaries and it, it helps you have a safe place. But there mm -hmm. are, are there are certain times where you create a boundary knowing that it doesn't matter. You could build this fucking boundary out of um, copper, gold, bronze, all of the things. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be respected. You're not going to respect yeah. this boundary. So I just like to move not on. and I just like to move on until the next time it happens because I know it's just a matter of time. <laughs> well, for everyone listening, I'm not going to tell you what the video was, but I will it say this. Pleasant. That's it was I mean. intimate. It wasn't. And intimate. it was showing... Uh, I was showing Wayne a side of me that not many people get to see. So, we have another question? Maybe there's another question we can read. <clears throat> I'm so... Just... I don't... Describe the moment you realize... Who's the question? Who's the question from? Oh... Paniel Marie. Paniel Marie. I'm going to okay. find out who you are. I'm going to, okay, let's go back because I can go look them up, right? But I'm not going to. Yeah. I just. Says, so Paniel Marie, let's see what the question is. Pan, <laughs> Paniel. Paniel asks Describe mm -hmm. the moment you realize you are living life as the most you. You. Okay. That's and a good please, question. and then she says, please. And elaborate. So, Paniel, you've never talked to Alex and I. We elaborate on a filet of fish sandwich. We're going to elaborate on this. That's correct. Okay. So, do you want to? Do you want to go first? Yeah. All right. So, w describe the moment that I realized I was the most me. You. So, so describe the moment that was the most me or that I realized I was, I was going to live my life as the most me. Can we read the question again? Yeah. And this is why you needed to ask it, answer it first. Describe the moment you realize that you were living life as the most you. So oh, at what, okay. at what, see, yeah. See, describe your most, like, when did you yeah. just say, fuck it, I'm coming as advertised. Uh, that happened the, the exact moment that happened. Um, and and I'm going to say it's it's been quite recent although I've never let I've never bogged down my personality. What the fuck are you doing? What is that? It's uh it's an energizing mist. Holy fuck, Wayne. Okay, so I uh so basically I've I've never I've always let my personality shine always. Um regardless of the situation and sometimes that's got me in trouble and and sometimes it's made me friends i mean I, I don't know but i will say this when i realized that i was just going to be me no matter what in any situation was probably pretty pretty recent i'd say within the last five years um i don't know an exact moment that i decided to do it but i will say this i i was in a situation and it had to do with the entertainment industry and I didn't like uh, a note that was given to me in a, uh, in a, in a, in an audition room. And I actually said, no, no, I don't, I don't agree with that. And I'm, I'm not going to try it that way. Like, I'm just going to do it the way I did it. I think it's better that way. I did not get the part and you can understand why, but I think at that moment, and this was like maybe six or seven years ago, that was the moment when I went, no, man, my my decisions and my choices are fucking great, you know? Now, I'm not saying if I get a part and there's a director that I'm not going to, you know, explore, uh, 
but but it's not just about acting it's about everything else too it's just my it kind of affected my entire life like no i can be me i don't have to feel bad if i offend someone because if i offend someone that sounds more of their problem than mine right mm -hmm. like if if someone is upset with me well that's their issue not mine unless i fucking care now, if I care if someone's upset with me, then of course, yeah, it becomes my, I make it my issue. But I just think that, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess it would be, you know, in my early forties, I just realized that, no, this is me. This is who I am. And if you don't like me, cause look, I'm not for everyone. Like my personality, there's people out there and I, I could see them in their eyes go, oh, this fucking guy's a fucking whatever, man. I can't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't really bo that doesn't bother me anymore because uh, I was going to be friends with you anyway. I mean, if it's not there, it's not there. You know, I just like to, I like me for the most part. I don't like all my choices. I don't like all the decisions that I have made in the past. I mean, there's some where I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? You know what I mean? But now at 48, I'm comfortable enough to say, yes, I fucked up. Yes, I take ownership. Yes, I, you know, I can say I'm sorry. I can do I can do those things freely now and not have any ego about it. Um which is also wonderful. But as long as I'm being me and just being the person that I am and have become, then I really shouldn't have to fucking apologize about anything. I feel. I agree with you, man. Yeah. Yeah, being unapologetically yourself is probably one of the biggest feats in the world, you know, as an individual. Yeah, I believe it is. As an individual, I always, I, I've been saying this a lot lately, like the, the biggest argument you have ever had is the one that you have with yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Agreed. Understanding your place on this world, and you've been talking about that the last couple of days too, just about, you know, how, and I saw that, by the way, um, that picture you painted, the cosmos, you called it, mm -hmm. um, it's freaking beautiful because oh, I thank knew, you, dude. but I also knew a little bit of the backstory behind, you know, before you painted it. But, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it is, it is, we are, well, and I'm not going to hijack, um, what you, how you explain it to me, but you know, what you said about the cosmos and how, and the relevance of us as humans is is so true that mm -hmm. it it if you live that way then you have no choice but to be unapologetically yourself yeah what did you say about the what did you say and then I'll answer because we I kind of want to hear that right now oh that that uh, the co this this quote I heard you're talking about the quote I heard right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so all we are as humans is the universe or cosmos however you want to say it all we are is the universe thinking of itself fuck that's all we are man we're just you know we are awareness and i would <laughs> i think the universe is is only awareness right mm -hmm. and we are basically just that we are the universe aware of itself yeah we're just products of the universe man and because yeah. of that we're energy and i it's funny because you had talked about you know like i call it perspective and i think perspective on the largest scale is realizing that we are a very tiny part of this solar system or galaxy now listen here's my here's my here's my um what's that thing you do disclaimer this is my disclaimer i'm not a mm. space guy i've never seen star wars i've never watched star trek stuff i'm not into that stuff or the alien thing i'm not that's not my jam however i'm also not naive and mm. we are a very small piece of a very big thing that is going on and we have you know we're here to leave our footprint but as you know we have paleontologists now that are doing science on dinosaurs from 10 million years ago 
We are at some point going to be 10 million years ago. We are at some point just going to be a fart in the wind, you know? And, and, and because of that, fuck man, like live, be, uh, have depression, have anxiety, have those things, but live your best life, the best life that you can live. Don't try to amount to other people. Don't try to don't, I don't want to be you, Alex. I want to be a friend of yours and I, and I want to, I want to learn things from you and experience things from you. I don't want to be you. I want to be me, you know? Yeah. And that's perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, that's perfect. I mean, like I, uh, actually there's this other thing that someone was saying that, um, that we literally are, hold on one second. Hello. Hi, BJ. Hello, love. Thought I heard someone coming in the room. Maybe I, maybe I didn't. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. We. We. Yeah, man, my brain just melted, dude. I thought I was getting attacked. I mean, I was on high alert. I don't know if anyone saw that. I was on. Wait a second. Someone's coming in. See, I couldn't have my and back. Is your back to the door? No, my back. The door is there is a closet door. This is a really nice looking closet. Actually, I wish I could show you this. My view right now is fucking spectacular. I'm looking out this window in the closet, and it's, it shows my kind of neighborhood. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. I'm going to be in your neighborhood soon. <clears throat> you are? Let, um, I, I forgot what it. I was going to say, so let's, let's keep going. Okay, let Maybe me I'll answer that. I'll answer that question. And it's funny because I had this conversation um, recently with a, another friend of mine, and we were talking about midlife crisis, right? Mm. And I believe that we all go through some sort of a midlife adventure mm. or crises or whatever. And I think the most traditional midlife is, you know, you're approaching 50, you, you go out and you buy a cool sports car or a motorcycle mm. or you go skydive. You do extreme things to feed your adrenaline because we're not getting any younger. Yeah. Where with me, um, because when I started living unapologetically as myself or as I um, now say come as advertised for me um, and the way my brain works with ADHD and with anxiety and with PTSD and depression, whatever, like the whole list of things that, 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 you know, people have decided that I have. And I agree with when I went through my midlife change, I actually got rid of all of those adrenaline seeking things. I sold my motorcycle. I organized my house. I stopped buying impulsively, you know, the things that I would buy impulsively cars or crazy big technology toys. I stopped doing those things because to me, for some reason, they're just things. And those things don't define me. They're just things. And if I'm, you know, and the perfect example is my motorcycle. I would ride this badass motorcycle with white wall tires. It was super loud and I would have a half helmet on and it. It says on, I had a sticker on the back. It says, it ain't easy being fat and greasy, you know? And I, oh yeah, I'd wear like a plaid jacket and I would like try to look all, I'd have like, I'd look all like cool and I would be laid back and I would have yeah. music in my headphones and I would look fucking badass. I would look so cool inside. I'm oh. like, Oh my God, don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Ooh, oh, a car just passed me. Ooh, oh, I can't go out. I, I see a cloud in the sky and I think it's going to rain. And, 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 and it was when I, when I sold that, somebody had asked me, they said, Wayne, do you miss your motorcycle? And I'm like, no, because that it was that moment when I realized that Things don't make you, you make you, you, you being accountable for the mis the, the, the misfortunes that you've created for yourself or other people, or the things that you haven't been successful with, but you'll be successful with one day or the, all of the shit, all of the negative stuff that, that, that I have been through in my life, man, I own it all. 
Yeah, and it, it fucking feels better than hiding it all or making up yeah. fucking lies, man. So it was recently for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and we talk about, you know, there's one thing that I've, I use. There's a term I use because I love it. Uh, emotional intelligence. So when I say that, for me, what that means is, are you, are you accountable for all the shit that you have done to yourself or are you not emotionally intelligent and do you blame everyone else around you? See, I know people, I have people in my life. Uh, I have had people in my life who were not emotionally intelligent. And once you catch, uh, you catch wind of that in a relationship and it doesn't change, even though if you bring it up and say, hey, look, you know, what what happened, what you're going through right now, you did this. You did this. And they refuse. That's not true. Fuck that. Like, I, I, they did this. Look, I don't have time for people like that in my life. I don't. I used to make time for people like that. I don't, though, anymore. So just as long as every single person around me who is in my life, who I choose to let, who I choose to let into my life, Mm -hmm. right? As long as they're emotionally intelligent people, we're good to go. I don't care if you work at a fucking McDonald's. I don't care if you're a CEO of a company. I don't care if you're a fucking actor. I don't give a fuck. And I don't give a fuck what your resume is. I don't care. But if you are an emotionally intelligent human and we hit it off, and we have, say, things in common. We, we have good conversation where we laugh because laughter is fucking key. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's in your marriage, you know, uh, in, in a friendship. I don't care what it is. Laughter is key. Then we're good to go. Mm-hmm. We're good to go. We're good to go. Get, get, we're good to go. Get we're good that. to go. We're good to go. Okay. What's the I'm question? Like, and <laughs> I, have, I have a crush on Claudia. Okay. But like a is, like a like a like a just a normal like a like just a normal. Nothing she's, you do is fucking normal, Wayne. Well, you know what I mean. Sorry, she's, I don't she's know just where fan- that came from. I don't either. You need to address that. No, Claudia is fantastic. We have been chatting recently. She's she her whole premise in the world is to get people off diets and just to you know there's good ways to eat and she talks mm-hmm. about balance but if you want to eat a loaf like a piece of bread eat some bread like it's all she's been through a lot she's got a huge following on so she's got like fifty five thousand followers on instagram yeah so do i anyway what's the question so anyways <laughs> claudia and i believe she's in cincinnati well, oh cincinnati bengals or right. cleveland no she's cleveland browns no she's cleveland because she's a browns fan Oh, it's Cleveland Browns. Yeah, they're doing good this year. Go ahead. I know a lot of Cleveland Browns fans. Uh, we all get shit on once in a while, Wayne. Go ahead. What's the question? What? That's so... <laughs> What's the question? I gotta go back to... What is the question? Wayne? I'm going back to it. I, 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 I dropped it <laughs> off. Man, here it is. <laughs> Claudia asks, what's your vision for the future? I.e. work, family, significant other, etc. cetera. Mm, that's a good question. Uh, sure, Claudia, I'll go first. Yeah, you go first. <sighs> My vision for the future. That's a hard one when you ask me that because my vision for the future is to not look so far into the future and to kind of just, you know, live in the moment. I've always done things. um, I've always tried things regardless of the result. And I guess part of it's a vision, but I don't know. I think um, we're working on something pretty uh, big. And actually, by the time this is produced and published it's going to be officially out there because we have a meeting on monday or we have a meeting yesterday we had a meeting yesterday yeah but that's right we haven't actually had it yet because we record these ahead of time yeah so when you hear this yesterday we had a meeting and 
the, it kind of ties into this, this question. Um, I, I, I liked, I'm, I am manifesting some things in my life and I think that they're healthy manifestations. And as long as the things that I manifest are healthy and, um, and I follow through with them, I think my visions for the future really are anything that I put in front of me. Like, I don't think that I, um, I don't think. It's a rooster <laughs> out my window. <laughs> that totally ruined the vibe. I didn't imagine that for the future, but I love it. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm manifesting healthy things, and and for me, I try to live in the moment. But I would sure, I I would love to see me in a thriving relationship with somebody. I would love to see, you know, um, I would love to see kind of the entertainment side of what I do to get a little bit bigger, you know, and to do things with good friends of mine. I would, I I just that's that's a tough question for me now because I don't really live tomorrow yet until tomorrow if that makes any sense we could edit it out I'm going through no. a lot right now no it's good it's good uh i'm gonna cry oh, oh fuck there's no crying on podcast uh, man if you're not adopted alex holy fucking shit here we go with the adoption thing again <laughs> Wait, I want to take a stab at that question. So um, I want, my future plans are, I want, I want a series. Um, I want, uh, I want a, I want a farm. I do want a farm. I've wanted one forever. My wife and I both have always wanted a farm. Um, I want livestock. I want... I want to pay off my Jeep. I want my kids to be really happy. These are my wishes, okay? This I'm just going down my wish list. I want my wife to be um uh I want her to be happy. I want I want I want to be happy. I want I want everything. And then nothing at all. You son of a bitch. Yeah, I know. Why? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to re-answer this question now. Okay. Yeah. I want mm -hmm. a television series. Okay. I want a house in L.A. part of the year. Okay. 40 feet from your house in LA. All right. With a that can happen. With a tunnel. Okay. Okay. And a vault door. Yeah. Which neither one of door. which neither one of us know the code to, but we know that there is a tunnel. But someone would have to know the code, Wayne. Not necessarily. Maybe you can't do you can't do uh, tunnels in L.A. or basements because of the earthquakes. They don't even let you. What if you had Unless a vault it was a door? a secret one. Well, it would be a secret one. Who has a tunnel between two houses that people know about? Probably not many. And in order for us to get through the door, we both have to learn how to be safe crackers. And neither one of us are going to do that because we're work smart, not hard, hard, smart, not hard people. So what about what about the vault door can only open once a year by a certain sound and that sound has to be explosive diarrhea. You know what's funny? Um life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You've heard that? Yeah, Forrest said, he says, Mama said, life's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah, Just, like Jenner. when I open up a video from Wayne, like I never know what it's going to be. And then I'm surprised, either pleasantly Listen, or disgustedly. Claudia, there are things that I want as well. I didn't think that, that Alex was going to punch out his vision board. But um, 
Oh, well, I did punch out my vision board. I took it a step further, Wayne. I don't have somebody to make happy. No, I do. I want my kids happy, and I want my kids to be um, proud of themselves, and I want... I want to I want to get healthier. I want to get healthier in my mind. I want to keep growing. And but I would really love a series. I would really love a series mm-hmm. with you. If we're being honest. Yeah, and I think that uh, you know, that's that is in the work. I think it's attainable. I do. I do believe that. Yeah. I believe, I believe that. I believe. I believe. Oh, he can't even sing his songs. He can't even be like, I believe I can fly. No, no, no. He's a sex trafficker. Mm-hmm. We don't do that. Yeah. He's going to go rot in fucking hell is what he's going to do. He I is. don't believe in hell, but he's going to rot in his mental hell. That was entertainment news with Alex Scooby and Wayne Hanna. <laughs> we just did entertainment. We just did entertainment news. Art we Kelly is we... a sex trafficker. And yeah. in other news. <laughs> oh, man. 